Good morning, my little nerds. I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a board certified dermatologist based in New York City, and welcome to our YouTube channel where every Saturday morning we go back to school and dive in deep on topics ranging from beauty, skincare, cosmetic procedures, you name it, we cover it. So if you have not subscribed, please subscribe below because I usually answer the subscribers' comments first and make sure to cover those topics first. Just FYI, there is somebody in the comment section who is impersonating me and claiming that you have won some sort of prize. Just know that is not me. Um, I currently have no giveaways going on and I am not offering any special prize. So do not WhatsApp that number because it is not me. Second of all, I recently launched Pillow Talk Durham, my skincare brand. This is not going to become a Pillow Talk Durham infomercial channel. Every Saturday morning is going to be an equal opportunity channel where we discuss any topic that you guys really want to discuss in further and in more depth. Um, I will dedicate another day during the week to Pillow Talk Durham so you can learn more about the Pillow Talk Durham skincare and if you do want to you can definitely go to the website sign up for the newsletter or sign up to join the waitlist because we knocked it out of the park during the pre-sale and I cannot thank you guys enough for that so without further ado let us jump in because today we are going to cover microneedling at home this is a topic that has come up time and time again I have seen hundreds of questions regarding at regard regarding <laughs> regarding at home microneedling devices and I thought to myself no better time than the present to actually address at home microneedling. Before we begin, this is a topic and a procedure that when done at home, human nature tends to think more is more. And I have seen cases where people have gone to town on their faces, especially in my practice, and people get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, worsening of acne, worsening of acne scars. So before anything, the biggest take home here is less is more and be very careful when you have this device in your hand. Not only do at-home microneedling devices look like torture devices because they are legit barrels with hundreds of needles popping out of them, but you can really torture your skin in the process. When you look at the studies of the benefits of at-home microneedling, the real studies show benefits of needles that go beyond 1.5 millimeters, which are usually not offered with at-home microneedling devices. At-home microneedling devices usually range from 0.2 to 0.5 millimeters in depth and not beyond that, because beyond that, you really do have to numb the surface of your skin and it needs to be done under the supervision of a professional because a lot of bad things can happen to your face and your skin in the process and you really have to do it in a controlled setting. So at-home devices have never really had the proven track record of helping with deeper skin issues like acne scarring. The fact that they're so superficial basically means they're scratching the surface of your skin. Can you get benefit from that is the question. And although the studies haven't really studied them in depth that much, I have not really seen anything that shows at 0.3 millimeter you're gonna have collagen remodeling. Anecdotally, in my practice, I have had patients who also swear by these devices and swear that they feel their skin looks better. And I've seen pictures where their skin actually over time does look better. So I do think there is merit to it in helping your products work better for you. But I think if you have really deep acne scarring, you're gonna be caught in some basic whirlwind of a loophole because you're not really gonna be helping the deeper collagen remodel. So that is my overall view of at-home microneedling devices. So let's jump in. So like I said, the biggest benefits are that they can help with very superficial fine lines, very superficial textural issues, um, things that are not extremely deep. And in the process, they can make your products work slightly better for you because they're going to allow for your products to penetrate a little bit better under the surface of your skin. But this is a double-edged sword because let's say you're microneedling at night and then you want to apply a retinol and you're slightly sensitive. Are you gonna be more sensitive to that retinol and is that retinol gonna actually cause irritation in your skin? So I think before you go crazy applying a bunch of products after microneedling, really make sure that your skin can tolerate the products without microneedling first, and then slow your way into it by just applying one product at a time so that you don't introduce different products and end up with a allergic contact dermatitis because now your skin is sensitized to all of these different ingredients. The other thing I'm gonna to have to say is that if you have an active acne breakout, if you have rosacea, or if you have eczema or an inflammatory condition, 
avoid it because you can further spread bacteria, you can further worsen your acne, you can actually make your eczema worse by further inflaming and breaking your skin barrier. If you have an active infection like a cold sore, avoid it because you're gonna make that infection worse and you might spread it to other parts of your face where you can get cold sores on other parts of your face, not just around your mouth. If you have extremely sensitive skin, I would approach extremely cautiously and not use this with skincare products on the same night other than something extremely basic, like a very basic moisturizer or even Vaseline to help with barrier repair, but I would not marry it with a complex skincare routine. And last, if you have darker skin tones, you really do have to be careful with at-home microneedling devices because I have seen in my practice people get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from them, where they end up getting more darkening of their skin, um, especially if they have acne marks and worsening of their acne scarring in the process. And you want to make sure that you're doing this really in a, in a very controlled and thoughtful manner. Um, what do you want to look for when looking for at-home microneedling devices? Other than the length of the needle, the material in which you are buying is actually very important. Whether the needles are made of stainless steel or titanium makes a difference. The biggest pros of titanium are that they are stronger by 50% compared to stainless steel. So that means they're less likely to bend, they're less likely to get blunted, they're more likely to stand the test of time. But the bigger negative with titanium is that they're not as easy to clean. And because they tend to last longer, you really have to be diligent in the cleaning process, making sure you're sterilizing the needles so that you're not reintroducing any form of bacteria or virus into your skin by puncturing your skin. So you really have to be a very responsible human to use the titanium needles. Stainless steel needles, on the other hand, are much more hygienic. You can clean them much easier. Um, they are much easier to clean than titanium, and they tend to be sharper compared to titanium. But they are softer and they can bend. And once they bend, you have to throw them out because you're only going to drag those needles on your skin, causing scratches and inflammation and really not getting what you're trying to achieve out of microneedling. Um, so you're gonna have to change them more in the long run, which can lead to more waste overall. So those are the biggest differences in the actual material between the different types of microneedling devices. How do you keep your devices clean? As soon as you use them, you clean them. You do not let them sit. You clean them with 70% isopropyl alcohol. You can also do a once a week cleaning with any kind of like denture cleansing tablet. Let it soak in warm water and that denture cleansing tablet and make sure that whenever you clean them, you dry really well because it is metal. And if you leave water on metal over time, it can rust and you do not want to introduce rust into your skin. And when should you use these devices? At night, after you've washed your face and you have really cleansed your skin. And do not do this before applying makeup because we definitely do not want to clog our pores. So make sure you're doing it at the end of the day when you know you're in for the night and you're not going to go out again. Your hands should be clean. That is one that is often overlooked. And when you are using these microneedling devices, make sure that they're being applied at a 90 degree angle around the surface of your skin because when you go at different angles with it, you're going to cause dragging, it might cause scratching, it might cause, like I just said, further worsening of inflammation. So you want to stay at 90 degrees as you're applying it all over your face. You want to go horizontally, you want to go vertically, I just did that opposite, and you want to go diagonally so you can get all different directions while staying at 90 degrees, okay? That's how you use it. So that is my spiel on microneedling. Um, again, be careful if you have active infections, herpes, eczema, rosacea, acne. If you're of a darker skin tone, be careful. Make sure you wear sunscreen the next day, especially if you're darker skin tones. And if you have sensitive skin, approach with caution. So the four biggest microneedling devices on the market that people tend to ask me about and that I've seen as being the most popular Number one is the Aura Microneedle Face Full Body Roller Kit. It comes with a roller hander and four heads, so it's not really six pieces. 
but this is interesting because it's much larger you can actually use this on your body with the larger body head it has 1200 needles on that roller plus they go down to one millimeter in depth which is unheard of for at-home devices. They can be extremely painful, so you do have to be careful. Do not use this on your face because I do not want you guys to worsen your acne scarring or textural issues, and it might be a little bit painful, so just be careful. Um, I think this is interesting because you can use this, however, on stretch marks. It can maybe help, especially if you apply it on your belly, and then you can use anything with bakushiol or retinol afterwards. Um, the stomach is more forgiving than the face, and at least you're covering it from the sun, so you're less likely to attract any sort of post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation on your belly. I think the other thing about this is that they are made of stainless steel, so that is the, probably the preferred metal of my choice, but once they bend, they're done, and you do not have replaceable heads with this. So it ends up being a little pricey because you're going to have to rebuy it over time, and it is $90. The Glow Pro Facial Microneedling Tool by Beauty Bio retails for $199. This one is specifically made for the face. It has steel needles, 540 of them on the roller, that goes down to 0.3 millimeters in depth, which really just helps with fine lines and wrinkles. It is a little bit fancier because this one has an LED light in the roller barrel. Do I think it's worth it? Probably not, because if you want an LED to really have effect, you have to let it sit on the face. So if you're rolling back and forth, how much effect are you really getting from the LED light? I don't know. But if you want to really spoil somebody and make somebody feel special, I think it's a good one to gift. But it's very expensive, so you're a very generous gifter. Um, and it's a little pricey, like I said. The third one is the Stacked Skincare Microneedling Tool 2.0. This one retails for $89. It is made up of 0.2 millimeter stainless steel needles, so it is extremely superficial. You're literally only going to help with fine lines over here. Um, so I would really just kind of beware of anybody or any claims out there about deeper textural issues because it's probably not going to help. Um, it is pregnancy safe. All of these are technically pregnant. All of these rollers are technically pregnancy safe. I personally would avoid it if I'm pregnant because let's say you actually get an infection. I wouldn't have to start worrying about which antibiotic could you take or antiviral could you take while you're pregnant. So I would avoid all of these while I'm pregnant personally. Um, but the good thing about this one is that it does have interchangeable heads. So once those stainless steel needles are done, you could just take the head, toss it and get a new one. The fourth and last one is this Sedera Skincare Derma Roller with titanium needles. It has 540 needles at 0.25 millimeters in depth. This one is made up of titanium, so it's going to be stronger than the stainless steel one. Like I said, you just have to be much more responsible in how you clean the needle barrels, and the head is not replaceable. But the good news is that titanium is stronger. So this one is a longer term purchase, but you have to be very responsible in cleaning it and making sure you're cleaning it really well and very regularly. Those are the four most common at-home microneedling devices that I have been asked about over the years. I hope this breakdown was helpful for you. When in doubt, spread it out and don't overuse it with all of your products. I think learning how to use it is very important, how to clean it is very important, and if you're sensitive, always test it first and minimize what you use it with. And with that, I am Dr. Shereen Idris. I hope you guys have a beautiful Saturday. And I'll see you guys next week. Let me know what you want to learn more about.